Welcome back to the English news updates this morning from Metro TV. We'll continue with the news, starting with the Thailand and other three nations are to help tackle the drug problems in the Mekong River region. Mekong River, which binds territories of six countries together including Thailand, China, Myanmar, Laos, Cambodia and Vietnam, has been a place for drug production and 30% of the overall drug smuggling forward following land transport. The suppression of narcotics along the border of Mekong region therefore became a responsibility of all countries along the river. Failing to combat the drugs network individually, Thailand's Office of the Narcotics Control Board has cooperated with teams of China, Myanmar, Laos and other re relevant agencies to launch a joint operation under the name Safe Mekong to bust narcotic production with China, taking a leading role in tackling the problems of initial substances and boat smuggling drugs across the border. Director of China's Intelligence Unit for Narcotics Control disclosed about the current situation of narcotics in China, saying that there is a widespread use of drugs among teenagers, while a source of it came from Mekong region and other neighboring countries along the Mekong River. China then sees a necessity for a cooperation to tackle drugs, as it is not a problem of any particular country, while hoping to see a successful outcome of the joint operations in putting an end to a widespread of the drug use. As for Myanmar, despite limitations in accessing the problems, the Myanmar Authority has provided information based on the military cooperation. As for Laos, the country will take care of drug smuggling from the northern to the northeastern parts after meeting of representatives of the four nations involved an inspection in the areas risky for drug transport will be introduced. Authorities of the four countries will later conduct a thorough inspection in their countries before forwarding the results to the Joint Operations Center in Chiang Mai province by the mid of January 2015 as an information for suppression of drugs in Mekong River region in the future. Taking a look now at some news from the Interior Ministry in which it has instructed all provinces to strictly monitor vintage shops as a preventive measures for explosion incidents. Deputy Permanent Secretary for Interior Apinan Su Tan Wong said that the Interior Ministry has instructed its officials in all provinces to strictly monitor vintage shops nationwide on a regular basis. The instruction was to prevent a repercussion of explosions at vintage shop in central Bangkok in the past few months leading to injuries and death of people nearby, as well as damages to local people's properties. The cause of the incident was a lack of knowledge of the vintage shop owner and a failure to comply with the related laws and regulations. Mr. Apiwan said further that the ministry also asked for cooperation and coordination from all public and private units where there are places for weapon drills to exercise caution in keeping their weapons to prevent any possibility of accidents and to ensure the safety of the public. Turning to more administrative news now, in which the President of the National Reform Council has said that he is confident that the Constitutional Drafting Committee will handle all proposals for the national reform with reasons that best fit the country's context, while the meeting of the next NRC is to be called on for December 15th to the 17th. After collecting public opinions, a list of proposals from subcommittees of the National Reform Council on 18 reform aspects could be concluded as follows. On the political reform, the subcommittee has proposed the Prime Minister and the Cabinet from direct election, 350 members of the Parliament from constituency-based elections and 154 senators from both election and appointment. On the country's administration, the subcommittee has proposed for a Committee on National Ethics and Good Governance to be installed to improve mechanisms of good governance for the country. On legal and judicial process reform, the subcommittee has proposed that state officials in judicial processes should be refrained from holding stocks in state enterprises and that an appeal court should be introduced for the criminal court for a person holding political positions. On local administration reform, the subcommittee has proposed that local administrative bodies should be more financially independent from 
the central administration by holding 60% of state's revenue collected in its area. And on education and human resources reform, the subcommittee has proposed for specialized committees in each area to be installed and for the government to introduce a pension system for people. Continuing with news from the Const uh, Constitution Drafting Committee, the President of the Advisory Board for the Constitution Drafting Committee, or CDC, voiced a concern saying that the Prime Minister from a direct election may not be suitable for the country. President of the CDC's Advisory Board, Prasop Sukbundet, expressed his personal viewpoints about a proposal for the Prime Minister from direct elections, saying it was one of the proposals with a good intention for the country. However, he reasoned as no country has adopted the system so far, Thailand should not try it. As if the also, if the Prime Minister is directly elected by the people, there will be no way to impeach him afterwards, leading to public disorder in the future. Mr. Prasop pointed out that the same system would be better in practice and setting stricter qualifications of Prime Minister is more likely to be the way out. As for the process of the drafting of a new constitution, Mr. Prasop said, after hearing opinions from all CDC members on December 15th to the 17th, the committee will conclude all viewpoints proposed to them, including the National Reform Council, the National Legislative Assembly, the National Council for Peace and Order, and the general public, and brought each issue into discussion in the meeting before drafting them in the new constitution. On to more news from the NACC or the National Anti-Corruption Commission. It has asked for the thorough revision of proposals of the national reform, while the Prime Minister affirmed the heart of democracy must be of a majority voice with a minority voice included. Prime Minister General Prayut Zanosha expressed his confidence towards the cooperation of all parties concerned for the launch of a new constitution with focus on the people while he was explaining the progress of the national reform and the drafting of the new constitution. He pointed out that with the new constitution, the country will be governed by the full functioning and sustainable democracy. The Prime Minister said further that though there is no conclusion on the national reform and the drafting of the constitution, rights and freedoms will be placed at the heart of the democracy without excluding a minority voice. Meanwhile, President of the National Anti-Corruption Commission, Ban Thep Glan Norongran, voiced his opinions on the reform of independent organizations and the constitution drafting process, saying opinions of independent organizations should be taken into consideration to ensure effectiveness. He also said that he does not agree with the proposal to reform that will allow the NSCC to directly file a case to the court and to offer no statute of limitations for corruption cases. Moreover, Mr. Ban Tae also disclosed a progress of corruption cases in the rice pledging scheme under the former government after receiving an opinion from the Office of the Attorney General or AOG seeking for additional questions of witnesses in the case. He said the NACC will discuss the case in the meeting on December 16th and will finalize a conclusion of a joint committee of the NACC and the AOG by the end of December. Last but not least, we take a look at some other news updates on the Home Builders Association, in which the house construction market for 2014 has seen a sharp contraction with a growth of 3%, compared to a normal growth of 8 to 10%. Head of the Thai Home Builders Association, Siti Pon Su Wan Sut, said an evaluation to the house construction market throughout 2014 nationwide found that the market did not grow according to the previous speculation of 8 to 10 percent, a total of 4,800 to 5,000 units at the value of more than 14,000 excuse me, 14 billion baht. He added that this year will be able to grow by merely 2.5 to 3 percent, a total of 4,100 to 4,200 at the value of more than 12 to 13 million billion baht. As for this year's overall house construction business, Mr. Siti Pon said it is expected to not sustain a projected growth, but better 
than in the real estate and general construction business. The fact that the real estate business sees a decline is positive for house construction business due to shortages of labor and construction materials. Mr. Sitipan said further that many house construction business owners has positioned their business in a clear way in their marketing campaign, such as energy-saving houses, luxury houses, small-sized houses, and houses in rural areas. The consumers, therefore, are more satisfied with their products and are able to decide to buy houses based on their performance. Such phenomenon contributes to a positive outcome to the house construction market in the future. However, head of the Thai Home Builders Association said the association expects a slight growth in the house construction market of 2015 at more than 4,200 to 4,300 units at a value of 15 to 16 billion baht or 3.7 billion baht. He pointed that the members of the association have been focused on an increase of the business standard to enhance their competitiveness. Those are the news updates for this Monday morning. We'll be taking a short break now. After this, we'll be taking a look at the traffic.